looks like. So one of the hardest things to understand about antennas is that radiation pattern. So in this illustration, I just want to show you how changing the antenna can change your coverage and help you understand a little bit about that radiation pattern. And the, I must encourage you just to try this out because uh, trying it out is the best way to feel really comfortable as to where you can expect coverage on your antenna. Now I mentioned earlier on that antennas are passive. So I can't increase the transmit power. I can just change the coverage pattern. And the way you impact capacity is by saying, hey, let's say I've got a lot of users in an area and rather than using one access point and one antenna to cover all of them, why don't I use two access points and two antennas? And so what you want to do is on that antenna, you want to down tilt it to reduce the coverage just to where you need it for that access point. And in that way, you're increasing the capacity because you've got less uses using that access point. So those uses can get higher throughput. So in this demonstration, I'm going to use the Air Magnet Survey Pro Planner module to demonstrate the impact of antennas on coverage. Now remember, if you have coverage on an antenna and you reduce that coverage, then you're actually reducing the area that users are going to be using that Wi-Fi network, and therefore that has a direct impact on capacity as well. So let's take a look at this tool. What you see here is I'm using the default site plan and you can see it's set up as an office. Now I haven't defined all the cubicles, etc. And you can do that in the tool. The only thing I've done is given it an outside wall. And what we're going to do is we're going to place an access point on this map. So let's go over to the access point icon. Click on that and we'll put one right here in the middle. Click Escape to let it go. And then I can come over here and I can generate a heat map. What well, you can see here that is radiating out these nice concentric circles. And of course those circles don't stop until I get to the wall where the signals are not penetrating the wall and so you see the disruption to those circles and of course if I put more obstacles in you wouldn't see these beautiful concentric circles but here I'm just illustrating the impact of an antenna and so I don't need to put all those obstacles in. So you see over here I have the signal strength measurement and I set it to a minimum of minus 67 dBm and so you can see up here I've got really good coverage in the gold and yellow colors and then as it fades out to the blue my signal strength is dropping off. Now let's take a look at this access point. Right click it and select properties and you can see here it's a dual mode radio operating in the 2.4 and the 5 gigahertz band. In this illustration I'm just going to turn off the 5 gigahertz band. Let's go back to the 2.4 and you can see it's using an omnidirectional antenna with a gain of a little over 2 dBi. And you can see the radiation pattern, just like we talked about, these wonderful concentric circles of 360 degrees radiating out from that antenna. Now what we're going to do is we're going to change that antenna. So let's come in here. We can either come in here and select from a range of different antennas if we know the model that we want to put on. What we're going to do in this demonstration is select pattern. And we're going to come down and take a look at the Cisco antennas. And here you can see I've got quite a few. Now you want to be careful when you're selecting the antenna for the map that you remember we've got the azimuth plane which is the one where you're looking down and that's the one that we really want to look at where it gives you coverage across the floor plan or you've got the elevation view where you're looking at it 
directly onto the antenna and that would give you the spillover between floors. So what we want here is we want what's referred to as the horizontal or azimuth view and those are illustrated in red versus the blue which is the elevation view. So let's come down and see if we can find a directional antenna. So this looks like a nice illustration to use and you can see the beam width on this one is probably about 90 degrees. So we can click on this, take a look at display, which will give us a bit more information about it. And again, as I said, it's the azimuth plane that we're interested in. It's put it on a polar plot where each of these circles here gives you a degree of how much the dB is changing as the signal radiates out. This looks like a good example. We'll hit OK. Then select, and then OK. Want to refresh the heat map? And there you can see it's now pushing the energy in this direction. And like with all antennas, you're going to see some side lobes and some back lobes. Now this is an antenna that you really want to position potentially against a wall. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's go and put it over here next to the wall. We have to regenerate the heat map. And you can see it's still radiating out in this direction, but I need to give it some direction. And so we're going to right click this, go back into properties. And what we want to do now is we want to change the direction of this. And we can either key the number in or we can move this bar here. The bar's nice because it gives you a sense of which direction you're moving in. But sometimes putting in the numbers is a little bit easier to get the accuracy. So this way it'll point directly away from the wall. So let's say OK on that. Come back and see the heat map. And there you can see it's radiating out in this direction. This might also be, because it's of the narrower beam, this would probably be an excellent antenna to put actually in the corner. We probably want a wider beam if we're going to use it on the wall. So let's move it to the corner because we really want to make sure that we've got better coverage than this. So let's regenerate the heat map. We have to go back in and change the angle of that. And here now we want to squidge it around a bit. There we go. Click OK. Hit the regenerate the heat map. And there you can see this obviously is an antenna that you really want to place in the corner because it's got a narrow beam. And if we want one on the wall, we really want to look for a beam more about 180 degrees and not the kind of 60, 90 degree antenna that we're seeing in this illustration. So in this demonstration, I've shown you that by changing the antennas, you can change the radiation pattern. And most of the good planning tools will enable you to actually put in different antennas and you can play with it and see what will give you better coverage. But again, on a site survey, you really want to have a range of different antennas. You should feel comfortable with the radiation patterns and you should just take them out on site, try them out and go around and be measuring the signal strength to see whether those antennas are really giving you the type of coverage that you need in that specific location. So a few terms you need to be familiar with, the isotopic antenna, most important you understand that. This is my theoretical antenna that radiates equally in all directions. Most antenna specifications will be relative to an isotopic antenna and it be quoted in DBI. If you see DBD, this is relative to a dipole antenna, half wavelength dipole. And I strongly recommend that you look very carefully whether it's a DBI or a DBD in the antenna specifications. And I always personally convert it back to a DBI because I just find it's easier and people don't get confused. There's nothing worse than doing a site survey and doing DBD and having someone else interpret it as a DBI. So always convert it back to the isotopic radiation level. Beam width, remember that's the angle of the beam where the half power in terms of my emitted radiation. So, and my beams can vary. 
So when you choose your antenna, you need to determine how directional it is. And the narrower the beam, the further I'm going to go. But then I'll lose coverage outside of the beam. Antenna gain is the measure of how far that energy is being pushed. And it's a measure relative to the isotopic antenna. A patch antenna, also sometimes called the panel antenna, this is one that gives you a beaming pattern. 180 degree, you know, normally on a wall is what you get. Some patch, particularly panel antennas, you can modify the beam shape so you can perhaps modify it to be a 90 degree beam or a 60 degree beam. A lot of patch antennas are just the 180 degree hemispherical radiation pattern. One of my favorite resources, and it was published in mid-2011, so it's fairly up to date, is the Cisco Antenna and Accessories Reference Guide. It shows some of the major antennas, it shows the radiation pattern, and it lists all of the Cisco antennas and you can really see what kind of gain etc that you're going to get and which ones can be used outside, which ones inside, which ones operate in the 2.4, which ones operate in the 5 gigahertz band. So a great reference resource. So what did we cover? We started out talking about the antenna basics. So we talked about the different antenna types, starting with the isotopic antenna, the omnidirectional antenna, just called the omni. Then we went on and talked about directional antennas, uh, Yagi and the parabolic and the patch antennas being some of the typical ones that you see out there. We then talked about, oh, how do I use those antennas and when would I use them? We talked about different deployment scenarios. We then had some fun talking about MIMO, and I explained what spatial multiplexing was and beam forming. So hopefully that will help you understand what's happening to your signals when they go over the air. And again, spatial multiplexing is what gives me those higher data rates, and beam forming it gives me that range. And beam forming is not on all the access points. So do have a look at that and uh, play with it. It's the best way to get used to the type of coverage that you're going to see. Went through a few best practices, and then I did a demonstration for antennas to help you understand that radiation pattern. And then I did a demonstration on antennas to help you understand what happens with that radiation pattern.